Good afternoon. I'm Journey Taylor and here are the stories we're following at noon. We continue to learn more about Wednesday's deadly plane crash and the five people who were killed. The latest on the investigation in just a moment. Plus, today marks one year since Russia invaded Ukraine. We've got the details on new commitments from the U.S. and other nations in support of the war-torn country. And is Walmart going to charge you for using a cart? We're verifying the grocery chain claim at 1214. But first, right now at 12 at noon, we're going to take a look at weather. Nathan, if I was in charge of the world right now, or at least here in Arkansas, I would say everybody go back home and just get back in bed. This rain is so ugly. I'm over it. It is a dreary day <laughs> journey. It is a much colder day out there. We had a round of showers and storms while you were sleeping last night, produced several inches in parts of the area and still contending with a band of rain out there right now. Now the heaviest rain is situated just down to the south of Little Rock. So here in the metro, things have really started to quiet down. The rain has slackened up quite a a bit, but there's more rain and some of this rain is heavy at times, making its way through Hot Spring County, Grant County, Jefferson County, Clark County, also into Cleveland and Lincoln counties, and this is all drifting its way off to the north and northeast. So expect on and off showers throughout the rest of your Friday and the temperatures. It is cold. Look at these numbers into the upper 30s to lower 40s. But with that breeze, it feels even colder. It feels like 35 in the capital city, feels like 39 in Clinton, feels like 38 in Arkadelphia. We're going to hang on to the clouds and the chance of scattered rain throughout the rest of the day. The temperature is not moving much at all. I think this afternoon, temperatures will only climb up into the mid 40s. Going to the weekend, the weather does stay unsettled. It won't be a washout. More details on that forecast coming up. Thank you, Nathan. Our top story this afternoon continues to be this week's deadly plane crash that killed five people here in Little Rock. We're learning more about the investigation as well as the victims. THV 11's Ashley Godwin shares what we know right now. Five people lost their lives in this plane crash, and now the NTSB is looking at why this happened. And investigators saying they are also giving help to the families who are now grieving. That's why the NTSB dispatched these spe specialists to help these families navigate through this tragedy. CTEH has now identified those employees that died on the plane. The pilot was Sean Sweeney, along with Micah Kendrick, Kyle Bennett, Glenn Marcus Walker, and Gunter Beatty. They were all headed to Ohio to help in response efforts of an explosion of a metal factory. We do know that at the time of takeoff, there was a front passing through in the vicinity of the accident. NTSB is beginning its investigation of the crash. This includes getting records of the pilot and maintenance of the plane, as well as weather conditions. Investigators have already reviewed video footage from the Little Rock Airport of the takeoff and when the plane crashed. It's just about the time the smoke was rising from the ground. It, uh, the video showed a front passing through high winds, rain, blowing debris, that sort of thing. There are five NTSB investigators working on getting answers about this crash. They tell us they will be here for several days until their report is complete. And that preliminary report will not be available for a couple of weeks, but we can tell you that at the time of the crash, as mentioned, the wind was gusting as high as 40 miles an hour at the airport and also also changing direction. Meanwhile, there's a major development in the Ohio train derailment investigation. A preliminary NTSB report shows investigators are focusing on an overheated wheel bearing on the train's 23rd car. According to the report, defect detectors placed along the tracks recorded three separate increased temperature readings before the disaster. When the temperature went above the critical threshold, an alarm went off on the train. That's when the crew applied the brakes as mandated, but the bearing failed and 38 cars derailed. Today marks one year since Russia's invasion of Ukraine, triggering the deadliest conflict in Europe since World War II. Russia invaded Ukraine on February 24th, 2022, thinking it could quickly take the country, but stiff 
Ukrainian resistance stop Russian troops in their tracks and with the help of Western weapons, Kyiv has pushed them back. Officials estimate there's been over 100,000 casualties on both sides, including tens of thousands of Ukrainian civilians. Now, as the war enters its second year, protesters around the world are calling on Russia to stop the conflict. Here in the United States, the Biden administration and lawmakers are taking additional measures to help Ukraine. Willie James Inman is at the White House with the very latest. Ukraine held a remembrance ceremony Friday in tribute to all the lives lost since Russia launched a full-scale invasion of the country a year ago. President Volodymyr Zelensky called the year, quote, the longest day of our lives. Afterwards, he and Poland's prime minister visited wounded soldiers in a military hospital. To commemorate the one-year mark since the invasion began, the Biden administration announced additional measures to help Ukraine, including more security assistance and new sanctions. The U.S. is committing $2 billion for ammunition and high-tech drones. And together with its G7 allies, it unveiled a new round of sanctions against 200 individuals and entities, including a dozen Russian financial institutions that support Russia's war effort. We are seeking to strengthen uh, sanctions and to make sure that we address violations of sanctions. On Friday, China urged the end of sanctions against Russia and called for a ceasefire. So we are concerned. On CBS Mornings, Secretary of State Antony Blinken reacted to reports that China may provide lethal military aid to Russia. China's trying to have it both ways. They're yeah. trying to present themselves as neutral and a party for peace while at the same time aiding and abetting Russia's war effort. In show of support for Ukraine, yellow and blue lights lit the Eiffel Tower in Paris and the Sydney Opera House in Australia. Willie James Inman, CBS News, the White House. And the U.S. is also said to raise tariffs on certain Russian products imported into the country, including more than 100 Russian metals, minerals, and chemical products. Police in Palm Bluff investigating a deadly double shooting this afternoon. Palm Bluff police tell us officers responding to a car accident near 3rd and Hutchison Street found two men involved. Police say both men were shot before their car hit a telephone pole. One of them died and the other was taken to a Little Rock hospital. The name of the man who died hasn't been released so far. In Pulaski County, sheriff's deputies are investigating a suspicious death near the 3M plant in Little Rock. While it did happen close to the site of Wednesday's plane crash, officials say the two incidents are not related. Deputies tell us a body was found just before 10 a.m. in the College Station area yesterday. The state crime lab is working to determine the cause of death. Again, officials say there's no connection to the plane crash. Arkansas Attorney General Tim Griffin now stepping into the case involving a member of the West Memphis Three, asking the state's Supreme Court to throw out the latest appeal. Lawyers for Damian Eccles filed this case to retest DNA evidence, but the AG's lawyer says it has to be thrown out because it was filed in the wrong court, Crittenden County instead of Craighead County, where the West Memphis Three were originally convicted. In response, Eccles' team says they plan on fighting back. The Arkansas Learns Act now one step closer to becoming law after passing in the Senate. The chamber voted it through Thursday after hours of discussion. Then after that, the House read it twice and assigned it to the Education Committee in the House. The House isn't in session today, so the school spending bill will be back up for debate early next week. Hurricane damage and citrus disease are squeezing Florida's orange crops. We're taking a closer look at your breakfast bottom line coming up at 1217 and Nathan what can you tell us that you're seeing out there I'm seeing a lot of gray journey and along with that we've got still the chance of rain remaining in your Friday forecast and it's a cold day here in central Arkansas but there is warmer temperatures that will be returning I'll let you know when that moves in and when the rain moves out coming up